This project begins by cutting off a chunk of wood from a 2x10 piece of lumber, which will become the front wheel of the wheelbarrow. I quickly find the center of the block and drill a small pilot hole. I attach a thin piece of wood with two holes in it as the radius of the wheel. With the screw holding the center in place, I use the other hole to trace out the circle with a pencil. At the drill press, I drill the center hole all the way through. Then over at the bandsaw, I freehand cut the circle out, making sure to stay slightly outside the line. Then at my disander, I sneak up on the line to complete the outside shape of the wheel. I'll come back to the wheel later, as next I'll set my focus on the barrel part of this project. I start by cutting up some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood to width of the table saw and length at the miter saw. Back at the table saw, I have the blade tilted to 22 and a half degrees and run the folding edges along the fence on both sides. One edge gets flipped over and run through again to create more of a rounded edge for the two end pieces. The middle section is wider than it is long, so I chose to use my miter gauge instead of the fence to better support the wood through the cuts. To assemble these pieces, I first line them up face down along my straight edge and apply thick masking tape along the two seams. I then flip the piece over and apply a generous amount of glue in each crevice. Then with tape in hand, I fold the two sides up and stretch the tape from one side to another. The piece was then left to dry overnight. Once dry, I take the tape off and place the piece on its side on top of another large piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. I align the flat bottoms and trace out the outline of the piece. After I remove the piece and freehand sketch a wavy shape which will become the profile of the wheelbarrow. Next over at the bandsaw, I can cut out the wavy shape of the first side piece. Then at the miter saw, I line up my pencil marks with the blade and make a much cleaner cut for the front and back angled cuts than if I were to do it with the bandsaw. Next at the disc and strip sander, I can clean up the rough bandsaw cuts for final shaping of the side piece. This is important as next I'll use this piece to directly trace the shape onto the plywood to take all the guesswork out of making another side piece. This time I chose to make the angled cuts at the miter saw first, then over at the bandsaw, the wavy profile. Next I can begin assembly by applying glue along the entire edge and placing the side piece on top. I then fire a bunch of mean nails to hold everything in place as the glue dries. The same is then repeated for the other side. Once nailed together, I slap a few clamps on to let the glue dry overnight. Now onto the handles and legs, which I made out of some thick oak pallet boards. The first step was to rip this board down to some one and a quarter inch square stock. Then at the router table, I have set up my half inch roundover bit to create the smooth grip parts of the handles. The ends are routed first in case any chip out occurs, it'll be removed as the long side is shaped. I then make a mark on the outside of the boards where the handles will intersect with the front edge of the barrel. The sides of the handles will align with the back edge of the barrel and my combination square sets the angle of the front. I then mark a line for future reference and begin attaching the three handles with two inch screws. This being oak, pilot holes and countersinking are a must. Next I take my large square and mark the length and angle of the fronts. I then remove the handles and cut these angles at the miter saw. The handles are reattached and a small front piece is marked and cut to length to join the two handles. Two clamps hold it in place while I drill pilot holes and drive in two 2 inch screws. Next using the wheel blank I can locate the position of the axle by eye and with my large square draw a perpendicular line across to guide me as I drill a 3 8 inch hole for the dowel. Next I lay the assembly on its side with the edge of my table representing the earth so I can get a measurement of the length of the legs needed. I remove the barrel and clamp in place the leg before drilling pilot holes and driving in 3 inch construction screws. Next I cut a 45 on both leg brace pieces so I can bring them to the assembly and mark where to cut them. Once those are cut, I tack them in place with some brad nails so they don't move around as I drill more pilot holes and complete the construction with more 3 inch screws.
Now it's finally back to the wheel part of this build, where I first mark out the 8 equal pieces using my speed square to first mark the 90s and then the 45s. I then use my combination square to mark the outer edge as well. Over at the drill press, I have the table tilted vertically and a spacer set along the post and the foot of the machine. I align the marks made earlier with the tip of my 3 8 inch brad point bit and drill the 8 holes as far down as they would go. Next I unfortunately went to the next step of drilling out the center with a 3 inch hole saw, but what I should have done is drilled out the spoke holes deeper first. I tried to fix this by clamping the outer and inner pieces together in my linear actuator vise, then drilling the holes deeper, but after only 3 holes I could see that this entire system was entirely too flawed to work properly from the start. If you're interested in actually seeing how to make a wooden spoke wheel, you can watch my old video showing the right way to do it with great results. So at this point I'm pissed off and decided my CNC was going to do all the dirty work. I also realized I should have made the wheel out of oak anyways, so I take some old boards, clean them up, cut them to size, and have my super special helper help me glue them up to make a new blank. I made sure to glue the two boards perpendicular to one another to restrict wood movement. I then cleaned up two edges, making them flat and square. This is because I have two boards attached to my CNC, allowing me to reference this corner, as I will have the CNC run the same code twice, flipping the workpiece in between along the square corner. The wheel was finished being cut off camera because my battery died. The last thing to do to the barrel was to drill three drainage holes in the front with nicely countersunk edges before moving on to sanding all the parts of this project with my random orbit sander. In order to sand the legs, they needed to first be disassembled. As I did this, I made sure to mark which pieces went together for easy reassembly after sanding. This is when I found out that the brad nails from earlier really should have been a clamp instead. Before starting to apply primer, I attach four screws to the underside of the barrel to space it off the ground. I used some old oil-based primer I found in my house and gave it one heavy coat. I let it dry overnight outside and then the next day sprayed on the bluish paint, which only needed one coat. All the oak pieces then got rubbed down with some walnut color stain and left to dry outside overnight as well. I then sprayed the wood pieces with two coats of semi-gloss lacquer over the course of the next 15 minutes. To begin final assembly, I removed the paint standoffs as they occupy the same holes as the handles. I drive in the two 2 inch front screws but quickly realized that the two back holes were no longer accessible because of the legs. So I drilled two new holes on an angle into the side uprights of the barrel and drove in two 3 inch screws instead. I added some glue to the far hole and pushed in a 3 8 inch dowel for the wheel axle. This wheel is not meant to spin, as after all this is a planter box, so the tight fit really isn't an issue. The last thing to do is add a little touch up stain on the axle and this project is complete. Booyah!